Some of you are sad today, and I know you are because the times are difficult with this crisis and all of that. But may I remind you, the Bible says that Jesus said, And lo, I am with you always, even under the end of the age, even under the end of the world. I am with you always. The good times, the bad times, the happy times, the sad times, the times of laughter, the time of tears. I am always with you. He's always with us. Now, what does this mean? This means that the presence of Jesus, the most important fact in your life is that Jesus is with you every step of the way. It's proof positive by his own statement that he's with us. He's with you right now as you're listening to me. I think a good example of that in the Bible is Mary, his mother. Mary must have thought something unusual about Jesus as a boy. I mean, they would be out by the riverside. Perhaps she was letting, I mean, he had four brothers. We don't know how many sisters, plural sisters. So he had at least two sisters. So she had all of her children down by the river. But instead of playing in the water, Jesus was walking on the water. And she had Jesus get off the water and get in the water like the other kids. Or how would you have liked to have been a brother or a sister of Jesus growing up and constantly hearing Mary say, why can't you be a little bit more like your brother Jesus? Or as a boy, one of his brothers, how would you have liked to have played baseball with Jesus? And every time he stepped up to the plate to bat, he always hit a home run. I mean, it must have been very difficult. And Mary must have seen some strange things about Jesus. So that's the reason when we get to a very joyful time, when there is a lot of laughter and a lot of revelry, and they run out of wine, that she says, Jesus can handle this. I know that he can. And she told some people there, whatever he says for you to do, just do it. During a very happy time, turn to Jesus. That's my advice to you. During a very happy time, listen to Jesus, do what he says, and everything will be all right. But he also comes to us at sad times. One of the most remarkable thoughts that I've had from the Word of God in a long time, in fact, I'd never had this thought before, never had. As much as I've studied the Bible, until just recently, I'd never had this thought before. Jesus is hanging at Calvary. He's dying. He looks down, and there is his mother Mary standing by John, and he says to his mother, basically, behold your son, son, behold your mother, and According to the scripture, she went home with John. Now, what does this mean? This means she was a widow. Her husband, the earthly father of Jesus, had died. Many theologians think that Joseph died when Jesus was but a teenager. We don't have any evidence of that, but we do know from this exchange at Calvary that he was gone. He was dead. Now, I don't think it's too far-fetched to also think about this, and this is what I hadn't thought about. Jesus also had some very, very, very close friends, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and Lazarus died. Now, Mary and Martha, while Lazarus was very sick, sought for Jesus to come, but he dilly-dallied around a little bit before he got there. Now, remember, Jesus always did that which pleased the Father in heaven, so he was slow coming in because he wanted to show the greater glory of God by raising Lazarus from the dead. But at that time, Mary and Martha knew none of that. And in fact, each of them blamed Jesus for the death of Lazarus and said, if you'd been here, Lazarus would not have died. Now, why am I bringing that all up? It's very possible that these friends of Jesus, weeping and crying, broke the heart of Jesus because the Bible says Jesus wept. And he brought Lazarus from the grave. Just think a minute. And it's very, very possible that it was so. Indeed, I think it was so. Then Joseph died. Here's his own mother. 
and his brothers and sisters brokenhearted. They knew that Jesus could raise people from the dead because he had raised a friend from the dead. Surely he'll raise his own father from the dead, but he didn't do it. He did not raise his own father from the dead, though he raised a friend from the dead. Can you imagine how much that have, must have touched the heart of Mary, his mother? But I think somehow she knew that her miracle-working son had a greater plan. And that greater plan involved a place called heaven when there will be no more problems, be no more death, be no more worrying nights, be no more coronavirus. Can I, can I just say this to you? Somebody asked me one day, Brother Harold, do you think there'll be pets in heaven? Oh, I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. I know Billy Graham said this. If I'm in heaven for heaven to be heaven, whatever it is that I really want to fulfill my life, God will provide it. And he said, I've got a dog I love named Wolf. And if in heaven I really want to see Wolf, God can make it happen. Why can God make it happen? Because God is omniscient. He knows every thought we have, every desire of our heart. He is omnipotent. He can make it happen because he's got all power. And he's omnipresent, which means whatever it is, if we want it that badly, and we may not when we get to heaven, but if it is a pet that we want badly, a favorite pet, because he's omniscient, he'll know it. Because he's omnipotent, he can make it happen. And because he's omnipresent, he'll enjoy that pet with us every day for all eternity. What am I saying to you? More important than a pet, more important than Lazarus or Joseph coming from the grave, more important than the marriage at Cana of Galilee, a time of fun, a funeral is a time of sadness. More important than all of those things is the one common feature about them all is that Jesus was at the wedding. Jesus was at the funeral and Jesus will be in heaven. And listen to me, dear brother, dear sister, and Jesus is with you right now. Standing somewhere in the shadows, you'll find Jesus. And that's true. That great old hymn is true. He's there with you right now. Time of sadness, frustration, worry, happiness, heartache, it doesn't matter. He promised he'll be with us, and he is. That's better than any father, mother, sister, brother. It's better than a pet. We've got Jesus for all eternity. This is Evangelist Harold Hunter. I hope you've enjoyed this little segment. And if you have, share it, if you would, please. And also be sure, if you haven't already subscribed, to hit the little word, subscribed. And that way you'll receive an email when I produce another video that I hope will be a blessing to you. Have a good day.